Hey coders and welcome to episode 0.1 of our script service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. This video is going to further elaborate on these things called triggers and elucidate the difference between simple and installable triggers. So I've created this Venn diagram to compare and contrast. On the left we have simple triggers. So these simple triggers are not actually technically underneath the script app themselves. But since they are triggers, I thought I would include them within this playlist. They have a lot of the same functionality as insoluble triggers. So we're going to include them. So what these are, are they are reserved function names. So if you say something like function, if you declare a function and call it on open, this is a reserved function name. You cannot make this a custom function. This is going to specifically tell the script that, hey, on open means that when a certain file is opened, say like a spreadsheet, I'm going to run this automatically. So again, these are reserved function names. Do not start making your own custom functions and then calling them on, on open or on edit or something like that. It won't work. All right, they must also be called within a container bounded script. Simple triggers can simply not be called from a standalone script. Those won't work, those won't work either. They have to be within a bounded script. Lastly, they cannot run for longer than 30 seconds. So. This is just something to keep in mind. Most of the time you won't need to worry about this, but this is just something that Google has set up. And again, it's just something to keep in mind, but most of the time, 30 seconds, plenty. that'll be plenty of time. All right, so now let's look at installable triggers. So with installable triggers, you have an increased flexibility. You They are accessed through the script app itself, so you have a list of methods. And it's just, it's, it's again, you just have a little bit more a wiggle room with these. So they're called through either the container bounded or a standalone script. So it does not have to be just a container bounded. In fact, most of the time you'll call these installable triggers through a standalone script. Lastly, these always run under the account of who created them. So with simple triggers, you can actually make it so that it would run under the account of, of whoever triggered that function. So if it was something like an on open, you could make it run so that it would run underneath the account of whoever opened that spreadsheet or that document or that slides, something like that. With installable triggers, no. Whoever wrote the script, that is the account that is going to be running that trigger. All right, now let's look, some, now let's look at some of the commonalities between these two. So they both run automatically, hence the name trigger, but this is something that needs to be emphasized because when these triggers run automatically, you do not have to be there. You do not have to be at your computer, you do not have to be at the code editor and hitting the run button to run these. These will run automatically, which is incredible because I remember sometimes at my work, I would set up these triggers when I went on vacation. It would do my work, I'd be on vacation, and but you know the business would still be getting work done by me, which was, again, this is phenomenal news it, once you learn how to do uh, these triggers. All right, so secondly, they only work if a user has edit access. So what I mean by this is like a file, say a spreadsheet. If you run an on edit, so if someone, well, I mean, that obviously makes sense, but okay, let's say on open. If somebody opens a spreadsheet and they do not have edit access, say they only have view access, your trigger will not fire. So it has to be for people who have edit access to these files. Lastly, they pass through an event object. So what I mean by that is that when a trigger fires, and say like, again, an on open, when somebody opens a spreadsheet, you will get something called an event object, which is data about that trigger firing. So it'll be like, who, who actually opened that? And some of the other things are, say, um, like what was the source of it? If it's a time, if it's a time-based trigger, it'll say when when that trigger actually fired, but you'll just get a lot more data through this event op object. You can decide to include it in your in your argument, your list of arguments, or you don't have to. It's up to you. We're actually going to cover this a lot in later videos, so don't worry about it too much if you don't understand it now. We'll get into that. Anyways, guys, again, I hope you're excited for this playlist. I know I am. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.